Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for this two-part discussion on the Moore clan. We are going to be focusing on tracing the genetic line of the Moore clan. Now there are two primary lines in terms of narratives that are out there. And one narrative places the Moore clan in the line of Japheth. Another narrative places the Moore clan in the line of Shem. And even when you are looking at the narrative that places the Moore clan uh, potentially in the line of Shem, there are some different lines that the Moore clan uh, may appear in. And so we're going to break this down into two parts. So we're going to right now focus on uh, the narrative that situates the Moore clan in the line of Japheth. And as you are already aware, there is significant obscuring of the identity of the Moore clan. And there is quite a bit of conflation with respect to the Moore clan. And so there are all of these conflations with respect to religion. And so you have the Moore clan associated with everything from Catholicism to Judaism to Islam to Hinduism. Uh, to some of the uh, indigenous religions. And so the Moore clan has been associated with a number of religions. And so what we are trying to do here, however, is to situate the Moore clan in terms of genetic ancestry. And in considering the genetic ancestry, it's also important to not be uh, sort of sidetracked by phenotypes because those of the Moore clan appear to be uh, represented by a number of phenotypes, uh, a number of skin colors, a number of facial structures and body structures, uh, hair types. And so it's not possible to completely situate them based upon phenotype. They cannot be completely situated based upon uh, religion cannot be completely situated based upon geographic locale. And so what we are focusing on is that origin. Where is the root of this group known as the Moore clan? And this is Dr. Tracy McCarthy. Let's get started. And we're just going to reflect back on a prior discussion. If you recall, in a previous exploration related to the Maria. Uh, we discovered that in India, the Maria, although being integral to India, are not necessarily clearly considered one of the Jat Gatras. And so it's not clear that their ancestry is coming out of India. In fact, what India is asserting is that the clan known as the Maria, the Mari, the Mura, the Mori, the Moor, the Muir, their assertion is that this particular clan has its origins in Europe. And so there was also referencing to some Iranian research that also indicated that the Moor clan uh, is rooted in Europe and has simply dispersed. And so there is plenty of support for this particular theory. And so we're just going to look at a couple of uh, narratives that situate the Moor clan in Europe. So we're going to start our discussion with the Ojigia. Now, this is a chronological account of Irish history. And this is actually where you find these narratives that are situating the Moor clan in the house of Japheth. However, in this particular document, which is a collection of writings, and this is from 1793 coming out of Dublin, uh, inside of this is also a sort of intimation that there is some sort of connection to Shem. And part of it comes from, when you look at the uh, cover there, you see that there is this indication that this is related to Deuteronomy 32. 
And so when you go to Deuteronomy 32, which we will do, you will see why it's a little odd that uh, this is primarily related to Japheth in terms of these uh, Irish events and histories. However, this particular notation, this quote, uh, is specifically related to Shem. And so you'll see why this is a little odd. Uh, and so in this uh, book that situates the Moor clan in the house of Japheth, there is this biblical notation from Deuteronomy. And it is, remember the days of old, consider the generations long past. And so it stops there in terms of the book. However, when you go on to the rest of the uh, paragraph there, you see that there is something more specific than just considering the days of old. It says, ask your father and he will tell you, your elders and they will explain to you. When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when he divided all mankind, he set up boundaries for the peoples according to the numbers of the sons of Israel. And it says, for the Lord's portion is his people, Jacob is his allotted inheritance, essentially. And so, again, this is an interesting uh, quote to offer in this particular historical narrative that situates Irish history and Scottish history in the house of Japheth. It's also one of the red flags uh, that point the way to perhaps some uh, questionable dynamics uh, potentially related to Shem, actually. And so this obscuring that has been noted uh, throughout history may actually be Shem imposed as much as it might be Japheth imposed, and you'll see why. And this is where it gets, you know, just a little bit more odd. Um, so you have this Ojigia and you have this relating to this legendary king going by this name or related to a deluge that purportedly took place during his reign. And so this is related to that which is primeval or that which is ancient. And this is just additional information related to this word and this king and this construct. And so within this text, this is a part of the narrative that situates the Moor clan in the house of Japheth. And so the Moor clan is reported as being descended from a woman, Moriatha, who is the daughter of Scoriath. Now what's interesting is when you look at Irish history, it's often couched in this construct of Irish mythology. However, it indicates it's Irish mythology, but then goes on to give these extensive genealogies. And if you go to the library and you actually look at some of the genealogy books related to Ireland and Scotland and Britain, um, you will see these same names and people that are purportedly a part of some sort of mythos. And if you're looking at your own ancestry, you'll probably find your own ancestry, your clan affiliations, if this is a part of your ancestry, uh, you will find the narratives, you will find the history, uh, you will find the tartan in many instances. And so this is a bit beyond mythos. And so this goes on to talk about uh, Scoriath, and this is out of the Oxford reference. And so it has Scoriath as being the king of Fir Morca. And uh, you also see information down below about another daughter with this Muriath. And so it's possible that this is just another a variant of Moriath. So you have Muir and you have Moor. And so there is some interchangeable dynamic uh, with respect to uh, this spelling. And then you have another narrative, and this one is the history of Ireland, ancient and modern. And this one has even more detail uh, with respect to situating the Moor clan 
in the house of Japheth. Now, this text is referencing another text known as the White Book, which is related to conquests and invasions in that part of the world. And so part of the narrative involves the history of Japheth, including Japheth's son, Magog, and goes on to talk about the descendants of Magog. And so we've discussed that in part. Uh, this goes into it a little bit more in terms of detail. If you want to really look at that, it also addresses the Amazons uh, being descended from this same line. OK, so we're going to be looking at this additional source, and this is from David Coleman. This is the history of Ireland, and this is from 1902. So this is somewhat later uh, than the other sources. And so what you have here is another discussion that is situating the Moore clan squarely in the house of Japheth. But just to reflect on what you just saw with respect to the Amazons. Here you have the Amazons and also Dan being situated in the house of Japheth. And what this does is it gives a reason perhaps for this intense interest coming out of Europe for what was going on on the west coast of Africa. And so pretty much the history of Benin, the history of the genocide uh, with the kingdom of Judah, the history of the enslavement of the kingdom of Judah, the disappearance of the kingdom of Judah, that history is pretty much held by Scotland. And that is the entity that has historically been holding on to the narrative about that entire dynamic. Uh, and so you have what potentially looks like uh, Japheth being the uh, perpetrator of that entire dynamic on the west coast of Africa. But you also have some things, and we will talk about them, that uh, perhaps situate this dynamic in the house of Shem uh, with respect to some other Shem groups. And we will talk about that. And so this researcher goes into the uh, Celtic Scythian tribe history and also goes into the history of groups such as the Phineas and the Gorias and the Murias and the Morias. And so all of these groups are situated in the house of Japheth according to the narrative of this particular researcher, including the Fomorians. And you can also see how some of these names are tied together with that King Scoriath and then the daughter Muriath or Muriatha or Moriatha. And here you see additional indications with respect to situating the Moor clans in the house of Japheth. And so here you see the mention of Scoriath again. Uh, and then you also see Scoriath uh, being represented as the father of the Murias, the Morias or Moriath, the Moor country, very specifically here stating the Moor country. And then there are also indications that uh, under the, the house of Japheth, you have the Lombards, you have Germania and you have Suevi. And if you look up above, you also see uh, some relationship between this particular group of people and what is known as Scandia uh, and a country named Scoringa. And so you see these common threads throughout these names. Uh, and so, again, you still have them being situated in Europe, regardless of how uh, you look at these narratives, you are coming right back to Europe in terms of the origin of this particular family group. Now, this doesn't mean that Japheth started in this particular area. This is simply where this particular descendant group uh, originated. It's like your ancestors may have been born in one place and then you're born in another place. And so it's the same dynamic. And here you see this very on point reference in Strong's Concordance related to Murias. And you see that it means 10,000, but it also means myriad. And myriad is usually thought of as something that is countless. It's too large to count or reckon. 
Uh, however, it's also related to the specific number of 10,000. And so when you think about the dispersion of that which is understood as the Moor clan around the world, then this idea of myriads, myriad, makes perfect sense. So before we wrap this up, we're just going to go over a few apologetics questions. And these apologetics questions are related to this bridge between this Japheth situation and situating the Moor clan in the house of Shem. And so some of the apologetics uh, dynamics to consider are these. Why is the UK referred to as the UK, meaning the United Kingdom? The United Kingdom is a phrase that is specifically related to Israel. Uh, and so that is definitely something to consider, to question. You know, why is that particular language being used uh, in this particular situation? The other question is about why were Europe, America, Africa, and Asia ethnically obliterated and infiltrated? And so what was the reason for that? What was the reason for going all around the world, um, you know, upsetting everyone's apple cart? Uh, what was that all about? And the situation that we are dealing with currently uh, is an outgrowth of that. Had it not been for that, we would not be in the situations that we are in uh, currently today and very specifically uh, in the Americas, in America, in the United States, very specifically. The other question is, what explains the centrality of Jacob and Esau in the UK narrative? And so you see situated in the UK narrative uh, Jacob, you see situated in the UK narrative Esau, and it's pervasive. And so it would be helpful to get a better understanding as to uh, why this might be the case, particularly when you're talking about uh, this assertion that various groups are actually situated in the house of Japheth. And then you have the narrative that all of Europe uh, belongs to Japheth. And so that's a question uh, to definitely consider. The other one is what explains the culture of pervasiveness yet obscurity? And so there is this effort to obscure identity while at the same time uh, being pervasive. So these are a few apologetics questions to consider, to ponder. Uh, if you have something to share about that and you have some enlightenment, that would be great. Uh, what is not helpful, however, is just blanket assertions that um, it's because it's Israel. <laughs> you know, so um, if you could actually, you know, provide some uh, additional narrative, additional evidence uh, to support whatever it is that you are offering when you're doing apologetics, you are actually offering uh, real answers. Uh, answers that are thought out that actually address the question that is presented. And so it would be helpful if you have that type of information to provide that uh, as we go on to look at the situating of the Moor clan in the house of Shem. And uh, definitely uh, something to consider. So you've got the Moor clan being situated in the house of Japheth first and specifically in the house of Magog. So that is definitely noteworthy. Uh, then you have the house of the Moor clan being situated in the house of Shem. And there are a number of dynamics that are associated with this situating that bring up many, many issues. As we wrap this up, there are a number of narratives that potentially situate the Moor clan in the house of Shem. There are narratives that situate the Moor clan in the house of Esau specifically, uh, potentially in the house of Ishmael, and also specifically in the tribe of Dan, more broadly 
among the ten banished tribes of Israel and then also generally in what is known as the northern kingdom now interestingly the northern kingdom is sometimes thought of as being related to Japheth however the northern kingdom is also specifically associated with the ten banished tribes remember knowledge is power take care see you soon